Excellent. Um, so welcome to Flamingo's like, latest event webinar. Um, so my name is Jude, and I am the CEO and founder of Flamingo. I see a lot of familiar names, and I see a few that I have not seen before. So welcome, new people. And then welcome back to um, the people that have been on some of our webinars before. Um, so a quick thing about me. So I started Flamingo about five years ago. Um, so if you don't know the Flamingo story, I spent about four months uh, going to all the high rise apartments in Chicago, talking to all the property managers, trying to figure out how I could potentially help. And from those stories, uh, learned a lot about what you guys like about your job, where you struggle and uh, where we could potentially help. Um, so Flamingo's mission is to provide the tools, systems and processes that help you really create standout communities. Um, so most of you know about our event marketplace. Most of you know about our resident app. Uh, but most of all, um, what we are really looking to do is create community. So community with our clients, communities among residents that we work with and amongst our partners. Um, so that's really what Flamingo is all about. And then if this is your first time uh, joining one of our webinars, our webinars are really very social. Um, so we keep it light. Uh, we keep it fun. Uh, there is a chat feature where you can ask questions, you can provide comments. Um, so definitely feel free to use it. And I see a few people have already started using it. Um, so as I go through this, definitely feel free to ask any questions that you have and any comments that you have. Um, so this is really meant to be very, very social. So today's webinar is really a crash course on resident events. So almost everyone does resident events nowadays. It's um, a very basic part of your resident engagement stack. But as you all know, resident events are very difficult to do. It's logistically challenging and it's always difficult to come up with new ideas. So this webinar is really all around like how to create a robust uh, engagement plan for your residents. How do you stand out? How do you make sure that every event you have is full? Every event you have, residents talk about it. Every event you have, residents leave feedback online to say, hey, our building does the best events ever. So that's what this webinar is all about. But a lot of it is going to be really the basics. So how do you uh, come up with new event ideas? How do you execute on those events? And then finally, how do you really maximize the ROI from the event? So that's what we're going to focus a lot on. And for those of you that have attended Flamingo webinars, you know our events, our webinars are very practical. Um, so they're short, they're sweet, and then we get to the point very quickly. So today uh, on the agenda is we'll talk about like why resident events and then talk about what your resident event strategy should be, and then talk about probably the most important part of resident events, which is how do you get the word out? And then finally, we'll talk about how to actually run the event and then what to do after the event. So that's a big focus for uh, the next few minutes. So the first thing is like why resident events? So amongst all the things you can do to engage residents, like why do resident events? Um, so it's really very simple. Resident events equal community. And at the end of the day, that is what you want to have. So residents have the option of living like anywhere. So, but community is what drives people. It's what brings people together. And it's what's ultimately going to drive a lot of the objectives that your ownership, corporate, your asset managers are looking for. So events are one of the quickest and fastest ways to really get to uh, the end goal, which is retention. So events drive almost every single thing at your property. So how we look at events is it helps create community. It helps bring residents together. When that happens, residents naturally form friendships. And when residents form those friendships, that creates loyalty to the building, creates loyalty to the management company, and really creates loyalty all around. And we have, um, for Flamingo, we manage over 15,000 resident events. We've done about 15,000, and about 15,000 are managed through our platform. What we've found to be the properties that have the highest retention, that have uh, the highest resident satisfaction, are the ones that are constantly doing events, that are constantly giving residents an opportunity to connect with your neighbors, to connect with the management team, 
and to really drive uh, engagement all around. So when you do that, that's ultimately going to lead to retention. It's ultimately going to make it much, much easier to manage your residents. A lot of you really saw last year how difficult things became when residents were just home, when they weren't able to interact with their friends, with their neighbors, or even with the staff. Uh, what we found was a lot of residents complained. A lot of residents were really constantly reaching out to the management team to figure out like, hey, what can we do here? What can we do here? And what we found too is that a lot of properties are really stepped up, uh, whether it's with virtual events or with other things. So events are always important, even uh, going through a pandemic. So at the end of the day, what ownership is looking for from your events is ultimately NOI. So a big part for what we say when you think about events is what's ultimately going to uh, drive RI and then what and how can you achieve that? So part of what we'll talk about when we go through marketing is how to use events to really drive those key points that your ownership cares about. And at the end of the day, it's going to be retention and it's going to be uh, driving NOI. So next part is when you think about events or when you are thinking about planning events, like what is your event strategy? So this is probably the most important part when you start thinking about events or when you start thinking about planning events. So there are a couple of things to keep in mind when you are um, trying to decide on the events you should do, when you are trying to decide on your overall like event calendar. So there are a couple of questions that I say you should always ask yourself. And this is really something you should do on a consistent basis. But as you start planning for 2022, this is really important to really think about, especially as you put down your budgets for next year. So in terms of goals, a couple of things that always come up when we speak with owners or when we speak with corporate uh, for events, they are looking for reviews. So these are common things that you should always think about in terms of how do I get ROI from my events? So one of those is reviews. So you should always think about how can I get events to be a review driver? So if you are not getting reviews from your events, really something to reconsider or something to think about like how to boost that. And we will also talk about how to actually use events uh, to drive reviews. The next thing is social. A big thing we see with a lot of properties is, uh, especially on Instagram or Facebook, is that they have all these really beautiful pictures on their Instagram pages or other social media pages of empty apartment units. It looks good, but it all blends in. So how can you use events to really drive your social media followers, engagement, and other things? The best communities we see really focus on using events as a way to generate content for their social media pages. So pictures from the residents, pictures from the event hosts, and then pictures from the staff. Receiving those pictures really allows you to then have a lot of content on your social media pages that really ultimately shows up what engagement, what uh, your community actually feels like, rather than just like empty apartment units. The next one is referrals. So how can you use uh, events to really drive referrals? Is it simply inviting prospects or is it having residents invite friends or anything else? And we'll talk about how to actually do that as well too. And then another goal is attendance. So ultimately, if you spend $1,000, $2,000 to do an event, you want people to show up. So you should focus a lot on event engagement and overall attendance. And that's where marketing really comes into place. The next one is foot traffic. So how can you use your events to do foot traffic? A big mistake we see is that a lot of properties simply do events just for residents. One thing we really recommend is use your events as a way to drive foot traffic. One of our clients two years ago uh, did a Halloween party where they essentially invited the whole neighborhood. And that allowed almost uh, 500 new people to come through the building. This was obviously pre-COVID, so now it's a little bit different. But using events as a way to drive foot traffic is what's really going to uh, help you stand out not only as a property, but really win you a lot of brownie points with your property manager. So when you think about your event strategy, there are a couple of different questions you should think about and a couple of points to consider. The first one is a large versus a small event. 
a lot of times we see from property managers that they only really care about doing like the large event that has 50, 100, 200 people. What we say is think about having a mix of both small events and large events. The difference between the two is large events would be like your pool party, your holiday party. Those events where a lot of your residents are able to attend. And those events are always, always fun because it allows residents to really see everyone. But the disadvantage to large events is that one, they are hard to execute, two, they can be expensive. And then three, they don't really allow residents to interact as much because if you have an event with 200 people, most likely your residents are going to just talk to the people they already know. But if you have a smaller, more intimate event, like a wine tasting event or a cooking class, that allows residents to really interact with everyone. And that's where those more intimate conversations happen. And that's where those more intimate connections actually happen. So when you think about your event mix, we always recommend have a mix of those very large events and those like very small events. The typical um, calendar we, we recommend is on a monthly basis, have your smaller events, and then on a quarterly basis, have your much, much larger events. So really think about the mix of large versus small events. The next one is when you think about your event uh, mix is the quality versus quantity. So again, you want to think about should we focus on just doing a lot of events or should we do just a few per year? So this one is really um, up to you how you want to do it. There's no one recommendation. Um, doing a lot of events is great because it drives a lot of consistency and gets residents out the door more often. Whereas if you do large events or if you, do, if you focus on like quarterly and more uh, qualitative events, then that allows you to really use your budget for uh, a larger basis. But we definitely recommend thinking through what your event strategy should be from a quality versus uh, quantity perspective. There is no one. There is no one right answer for what works the best. We've seen properties execute on quality, uh, where they do just two or three events a year, and then typically they are able to get about a hundred plus people attending those events. We've also seen properties focus just on qu on quantity where they do events almost every single week or every single month. And that in itself also drives engagement on a much different way. So we really recommend thinking through what works the best for you and your demographic. And there are a couple of questions that you have to think about here. If your team is small, you're really busy, then maybe focusing on quality is more important where you do maybe four events per year. If you have a large staff, where someone is, um, their time is 25% dedicated to events, then maybe qual uh, quantity is uh, what you want to drive for. But really there is no one right answer. You still want to do a mix of those. And this is where you can play around. So maybe for one quarter, focus on doing uh, monthly events and then another quarter of or the rest of the year, focus on just doing like one or two events for the rest of the time. But again, uh, really a way to test out and see what residents respond to. And then another thing to think about is the mix of events you do and who you target. So a mistake that we see is you, a lot of properties do events for just everyone. That's not always the right case. You want to have a mix of events, events that get at everyone. So that could be pretty much anyone in the building can attend or you could do events that are targeted to mixed groups or to very like niche groups in the building. An example would be doing a yappy hour. So an event that is very much focused on pet owners, or you could do an event that's focused on families with kids. So really think about your event mix to be uh, a mix of events for everyone and a mix of events focused on just a specific segment in the building. One of the most successful events we saw about two years ago was actually like a women's self-defense class. So for that one, almost 25% of the women in the building turned up for that event. So something that was very important to them. So as you think about your event mix, really get creative to see what are all the different groups at my building and how can I target them with specific events that might resonate the most with them. 
It could be as simple as um, um, like a lecture that you bring a professor close by to do on finance, or it could be as complex as something that's very focused on a very specific and small segment in the building. So really think about doing a mix of events that go across the board and a mix of events that are very, very targeted to a small segment. And what this is going to do is really allow people that have maybe never come to your events to come to an event that uh, just like appeals to them so much because it's so focused on uh, what they care about. And then another thing we, as you think about your event mix is really on-site versus off-site events. Most properties, I'll say about 99%, all their events are on-site. So I'll say do not discount off-site events, especially as things reopen and uh, especially in months where it's like nice outside. So one of our clients in Denver, they actually do an annual ski trip with all of their residents. So that's an off-site event they do. It's extremely successful. So as you think about your event mix, what are events you could do off-site besides just the events you do on-site? So one that is really, really critical is think about how can we get our residents like out the building? And the nice thing about off-site events is that someone else has typically already done the work for you. So for example, I am based out of Chicago and this weekend is the air and water show. So if I were a Chicago property manager, I would have organized just a small outing to go to the beach, to go see the air and water show. For an event like that, you don't really have to do a lot of things. All you have to do is add the event to your event calendar and let residents sign up and then they can meet in the lobby and go together. So that still gets to the opportunity for residents to really interact and connect with each other without you having to do a lot of work. So as you think about your event mix, definitely consider events that are both on-site and all the opportunities for like off-site events. Because for those ones, all you really have to do is make residents aware of that event and then give them the opportunity uh, to connect uh, and then go to that event together. So really important to add off-site events to your event mix. The next thing is really thinking about the difference between events and experiences. So experiences are really always going to be what drives uh, the most amount of engagement. So the easiest example to think about the difference between an event and an experience is um, an event would be, hey, let's do a pizza party. That's fun. That's great. It's nice. I get to meet my neighbors. But if you extended that to make it um, like a murder mystery dinner, a lot more experiential, a lot more interesting for your residents. The reason why you want to focus more on experiences rather than events is because your residents have a lot of opportunities. They have a lot of options for what can pick up their time, whether it's Netflix, uh, whether it's going to the beach, whether it's spending time with friends. So when you think about your event and engagement strategy, you really want to think through the quality of the experiences that you create. So what can you offer residents that they really cannot get anywhere else, that things that they have never experienced at all? So and a, a quick example is really like a murder mystery event. So that's something that most people have heard of, but they have never tried. Doing something like that is going to get a lot more engagement than a simple dinner or a simple like catered event for your residents. So really think through on what are the core experiences that we can create. And the nice thing about experiences is that in some situations, they are actually cheaper for you to do. So most properties have really cool event spaces. So how do you utilize those more to turn them from just an event or an empty space into an experiential space? So right now it's still summer. So rather than simply doing uh, your regular fitness classes, Combine those with um, a brunch, mimosas, and a DJ to create like a fun experience for residents where they get to work out, uh, they get to um, eat a nice meal, uh, they get to experience live music. So that takes a fitness class from just an event into more of an experience. So that's a lot of the things you want to think about for your events as you plan out for 2022. So how can I take all the events I did last year 
and turn them more into experiences rather than just events. So really, really important, as especially as things get more competitive. And the nice thing about the experiences is also that this is where you would get the most amount of uh, user-generated content. So we mentioned earlier, one thing to always consider is how can I get pictures? How can I get content? How can I get hashtags from my events? So if you are able to create experiences, your residents are really going to uh, push content that will really surprise you. And then next thing as you work towards uh, your event plan is to really focus on creating an event calendar for the year. Again, a big mistake we see property managers make is that they plan events a month, two months or three months out. What you really want to do is plan out your events at least a minimum of six months in advance. We really recommend planning your, planning your events out at least 12 months in advance. The reason why that's so important is because when residents can see a calendar of events, they are more likely to commit, they are more likely to renew, and then they are really always aware of the other upcoming events. So if your events are just planned a month out, then residents, it's really disconnected for them. It's like, okay, I see that we have a sip and paint event next month. What's after that? But if they can see that, hey, we have after the sip and paint event, uh, we have a happy hour after that, we have a yappy hour after that, or we have our holiday party after that. They are more likely to sign up and stay engaged with those events and then constantly check on what's like next. So really focus on creating a content calendar of events all the way out as far as you can get. And it doesn't have to be set in stone. So even if you put down a date for your holiday party, it doesn't mean that's the absolute date where you are going to have it. So if you add it, you can see if residents are interested or not. So and then that allows you to know like, hey, we it's January and we added our holiday party for like December 5th and already 100 residents have signed up. So that means they are really interested in the holiday party. So this allows you to almost gauge what residents are going to like or what's not what they are not going to like even before you finalize all the details. So really recommend plan out your event calendar at least uh, six to 12 months uh, ahead of time. And then another big tip uh, is as you are planning out your event calendar is to really partner with the marketing team. So the reason why you want to partner with marketing is that it's going to allow you to get a much, much bigger budget for your events. In most communities right now, their event budget falls under retention. But if you partner with marketing, your event budget can be under uh, retention and then also acquisition. So when you partner with marketing, you can say, hey, X, Y, Z percent of our events are going to include prospects. So can we use some of that budget you, you would have spent on maybe social media or marketing to spend on actually inviting your prospects to come to your events? So this is probably one of the quickest ways to instantly double your budget for events and then to also get a partner uh, who is actually going to help you with the uh, events, whether it's before the events or even like the day of the event. And then uh, your leasing team is really going to love this because if they have all of these prospects coming to events, it's a quick way to get a tour in uh, after the event or even during the event. So highly recommend you partner with your marketing team to one, double your, uh, your event budget, two, drive foot traffic, and then three, uh, really drive the number of tours that you have. So highly, highly recommend this one. The next one is, as you've kind of thought through all of that, the classic event mix that we see are a few things. Uh, at the very top is always going to be events that have food or alcohol. Those are always the most popular events. So when you think of your event mix, you really always want to have uh, events where residents are going to get food. And uh, quite a variety of events you can do there, including like skill-based events, but really always recommend you have some type of food. And then the next one down is family-friendly events. Always recommend your event mix should include a family-friendly events, especially if you have a community that has a lot of families. They always really appreciate that. And a big mistake we see is that a lot of communities do events that are 
targeted more to like uh, millennials and non-family. So really think about uh, incorporating family-friendly events to your event mix uh, because those moms and dads or parents are really going to appreciate having that option to bring their kids to an event, which gives them time to uh, do something else. And then pet-friendly events. So almost every building we know is pet-friendly and it's a very like niche group of people. So it's another fun event to do, whether it's like a yappy hour or other things. So always incorporate uh, pet friendly events into the mix. And then the next one is like health and wellness. So those ones are everything from like a fitness class to uh, cooking classes like one one So you wanna incorporate some type of health or wellness events into your event mix. And then the next one is uh, skill-based events. So skill-based events could be Calligraphy 101, it could be uh, photography 101, it could be sip and paint events. So we really recommend you add some of those like skill-based events into your event mix. The reason why those are great is because it really offers residents an opportunity to learn something new, uh, to have a takeaway from the event, and it makes it even more experiential. So always recommend you have some type of skill-based event uh, as part of your overall like event mix. And then another way to really uh, take the skill-based events to the next level is to combine them over a whole year. So one example we have is for sip and paint events. One thing you can do is have a sip and paint event every single month where each month residents focus on one thing. And then at the end of the year, you can do an art gallery of all the art that residents have created uh, throughout the year. So that allows residents to really build on top of the skills that they have. And what's that, what's that, uh, what that's going to allow as well is that the people that are looking to complete the skill are going to always be at that event. So that's something that's really going to help you boost your event engagement and attendance for that. And then outdoor events. So I always recommend using outdoor events many of you have really amazing outdoor spaces. So take advantage of those, whether it's an outdoor movie, whether it's outdoor fitness classes, uh, really use the outdoor space when you have the opportunity to use them, especially for um, the people that are located in those like colder regions where it gets cold uh, by like November. So make sure you really take advantage of the outdoor space. And then large events. So think about how can we do much larger events in a way that um, is still like within budget, but in a way that's going to really bring either for traffic or that's going to bring out a lot of residents. An easy example for a really large event would be like a food truck festival. So a food truck festival, it's a very simple event to execute. Invite three, four, five food trucks to come to the building and then invite as many people as you can get. So invite your residents, invite prospects, invite the uh, neighborhood, invite the media. So getting that is going to allow you to really create this amazing festival where you have all these uh, people coming to the building, driving up for traffic, and then also driving up your brand awareness. So really recommend you think about what is a large event that we can do that is going to allow not only our residents to be engaged, but it's going to allow us to really build our brand uh, locally with either the immediate community or with our prospects from all over. And that one is nice because it, it can be an event that gets a lot of people, but isn't expensive. One of our clients did something similar where they invited, they essentially did like a, a restaurant week. So they invited like 10 different local restaurants to come to the building and then just set up. And then they invited everyone to come to that, uh, to the building. So it's an event that didn't really cost them anything because the restaurants were like happy to do that because that allows them to uh, get their brand out. So with an event like that, they were able to get over like 500 people uh, to come to the event. So another really cool idea to do without you having to spend a lot of time or you having to spend a lot of money. So highly recommend that one. And then that one is pretty obvious, but do a lot of on-site events. You have the property, so take advantage of the amenity spaces. And then also then incorporating like up, uh, off-site events. So what are those off-site events you can do? That's going to allow your residents to experience either the local neighborhood or experience somewhere else in uh, town. So the 
big benefit for offsite events is you don't have to do any work. So someone else has already organized the event. All you have to do is let your residents know about the event and then have them organize as a group to go to the event together. So I'm curious for the people on the line, what would you say is the most challenging part of uh, your resident events or doing resident events? So adding that as a poll. Um, so if you can complete the poll, uh, that would be awesome. Um, so we were definitely curious to see what for you all has been the most challenging part about your events. So doing the poll to make sure that you all are still awake. <laughs> So give it a few minutes and then we'll see what everyone says on the poll. Um, so a lot of people are saying uh, B, which is like attendance and engagement. And then next up is uh, logistics. So finding the vendors and then um, at the bottom is success. So measuring the results. So we'll just give it a few more minutes for a few more people to complete a, a survey. Okay, great. Okay, I'm uh, going to close out the survey now. Um, so we have a ton of responses. Uh, so let me close that out. Okay, um, so in the poll, the number one challenge actually is a tie between uh, vendor research and logistics is uh, and then tied with attendance and engagement. So it sounds like the biggest challenge for a lot of people is one, uh, all the work that goes into the event, and then two, uh, trying to actually get residents to uh, attend the event. So that's the next phase of what we are going to talk about. So how do you make it simple to come up with event ideas, do the research, find the vendors, and then how do you ensure that the event itself is successful? So lots of different ways to do that. So when it comes down to vendor research, one quick way of doing that is put together a list of all the different vendors that you can work with. It's pretty simple. You can, you can go on Yelp, you can go on Google, uh, just create a list of really great um, event ideas, a list of really great event providers, and then put down all your contact information and then the type of events that they do, uh, look at their ratings and then look at their reviews. And then from there, you can have a robust list of all the different event providers that you could work with. And when you've created that, you can always add onto that list. So each time you do an event, add that vendor that did the event to that list. So next time you wanna do that event, all you have to do is call them or send, uh, reach out to them. And you can also then add how the event itself went. So did they provide you a lot of value or was the event a flop? Were they really proactive with making sure the event went well or were they not doing that? So really spend time putting together your list of all the different event ideas and then the different event host uh, that could do those events for you. Once you've done that, then going forward, doing events are going to be really, really simple for you. So doing that upfront work is going to be probably the best thing you can do. And a huge tip there is if you work in a region, reach out to um, your colleagues at the other building. Say, hey, what do you guys use for this, this, and this? Here's my list of vendors that I've found to be really successful. So share with them and then get the list from them as well too. So that's going to make your job much, much easier especially given the fact that for a lot of people, a big challenge for events is finding the right vendors and then all the logistics that go into it. So once you have your list, that's going to serve you really at all points going forward. And highly recommend you share that with uh, your colleagues at the other properties. Maybe not with your competitors, but definitely share with your um, uh, colleagues. So if you are aware of Flamingo, we definitely make it really easy for you to uh, find event ideas and book events. So we have a free tool that has a lot of different event hosts. We have, actually we have thousands of event hosts 
all across the US from uh, artists that do wine and paint to caterers, to chefs, to comedians, to uh, murder mystery providers. Um, so our event marketplace uh, has thousands of event hosts that are available. So this is like a quick um, bib on Flamingo for how we are able to help you. Oh, and I apologize if you are hearing some noise. So Chicago today is, um, we are hosting the air and water show. So there are a bunch of like airplanes like flying around the office. Uh, but if you are looking to make it really simple for uh, finding like vendors or event providers, uh, you can use Flamingo's event marketplace uh, to see thousands of event providers that we have all across the US. And then so once you've uh, put together your list of uh, vendors, you've put together a list of providers, you've put a, lot, uh, a list of ratings and everything else, you can now create your event mix. So your event mix is really for this year or next year, what are all the events that we want to do? So I mentioned earlier that one of the most important things you can do is really have a list of all the events that you want to have on a calendar that, that your residents can see. You'll be surprised how much it changes the dynamic in the building when residents can see that, hey, we have events going up until the end of the year. It gets them really excited and it's going to completely change the type of engagement that you see at your events. So what you see in front of you is just like a simple event mix. So I definitely encourage you to create something similar. So what are all the events you can do? And then if you want to create something like this, this is something you can use on an ongoing basis. So typically, um, the events we see very successful are like cooking classes. So recommend those uh, tastings, whether it's like a beer tasting, chocolate tasting, uh, whiskey tasting. So a lot of things you can do within that. Food trucks, very successful. And you have a lot of options within food trucks. So you can do a food truck, a dessert truck, an alcohol truck, uh, ice cream truck, a lot of different options for food trucks. And you can mix that up every single year. Uh, live music, a really easy and fun thing for your residents. Find a band, bring them on site, have an outdoor event, maybe provide alcohol, another fun event for residents. Uh, outdoor movie helps you take advantage of your outdoor space. Cocktail making events, always very popular. Sip and paint events, always popular as well. And then if you are looking to try something new, try like a casino party. So rather than your typical holiday party or your typical a pool party, try like a casino party where residents are able to dress up really well and it's like a formal affair. You could, you could call it like night in Vegas or night in the Monte Carlo. So do a fun formal event that allows residents to really dress up and feel like, hey, this is like a special night out. So I encourage you to really think through what could be a fun event mix that you can create. And then so create something like this and then use it over and over and over again and then add variations to it. And one thing we'd encourage is when you create something like this, meet with the rest of your team to go through like, hey, how can we then turn all of these from events into experiences? So for example, if you did a fitness class, how can you turn some of your fitness classes into experiences? So a very quick way is do it on a rooftop, provide food, provide alcohol, provide uh, mimosas, and then for a wine and paint event, how can you take it from just a simple event and take it to the next level? So a quick way is to make it a recurring event where maybe you do a wine and paint event every quarter. And then at the end of the year, you do an art gallery. So half residents like show off all the art they created the last like year. The same thing too, you could do a kid dinner or you could do a murder mystery dinner. So a lot of different ways to really think through this. So force yourself to get really, really creative with the events that you do. And this is really what's going to help you stand out. And that's what Flamingo is all about is, hey, stand out by taking things always to the next level. So as you put together your events, think about how can we take it to the next level? And then uh, next thing is to talk about event marketing or why Coke spends $4 billion in marketing every year. So I've said, I say this a lot, but the biggest mistake that we see people make when they do events is with the event marketing. So for a lot of property managers, you spend all this time and money to do an event, but then no one shows up. It's not because residents are like, hey, I hate events or I don't want to meet other people. It's because they don't know about it. 
or they might know about the event, but they don't know why they should attend. So if you send out an email to say, hey, we have a wine and paint event, a lot of people would read that and say, um, so? So when you send out marketing, you have to really think like a brand, think like Coke, think like Nike. What does Nike do differently? So think about what marketing you need to utilize when you do events. So you really want to spend, I'll say you want to spend more time on the event marketing than you do on finding the event host, than you do on logistics, because marketing at the end of the day is what's going to be the biggest differentiator. A lot of people think, hey, if I do an event, I send out two, three emails, that's all I need to do. But all the things you do matter. Like when you send the email, what does the email look like? Where else are residents going to be aware of the event? So all those things are really, really going to make a huge difference in the level of engagement that you get at an event. So the first thing is your event marketing should be really attractive. So don't print out like a black and white flyer. Make the residents really envious when they see the marketing to say, hey, that event looks amazing. So it includes everything from the copy that you use to the graphics, to the uh, text, to the pictures, really all of that matters. This is probably the number one mistake that we see uh, when it comes to resident events is the marketing doesn't match up to the event itself. So spend a lot more time on your marketing strategy for events than you do on the actual event logistics. Definitely still spend time on event logistics, but the marketing is really, 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 really important. So spend a lot of time on how you do the marketing. So very obvious, uh, quick things you can do. Make sure you have flyers in the elevator. Make sure you add the uh, event to your lobby screens if you have a lobby screen. Make sure you send out an email. Make sure if you have an app, make sure it sends out um, text messages or it sends out notifications. And then if you have resident emails and they have opted in for text messages, make sure that uh, they get text messages. And it doesn't stop there. Uh, when someone signs up for an event, it doesn't mean they are going to show up. So one thing you need to make sure is that for the people that have signed up for the event, they are getting reminders about the event. I cannot tell you how many times I have signed up for something and then completely forgotten about it. So for your residents, you have to make sure you have a system in place to send reminders to people that have signed up for the event. And typically all they need is a, a day before reminder, so 24 hours before the event, and then a one hour reminder, so an hour before the event. And then for the people that have not signed up for the event, you still need additional pushes. So what we typically recommend is have a specific marketing targeted to people that have not yet signed up for the event. The reason behind that is if you have an event, let's say next Tuesday, and I get an email about it today, I might be like, oh, I'm actually not available next Tuesday because I have, I don't know, I have a fitness class that I signed up for already. But come Tuesday, I might get up and be like, oh, I really don't feel like working out today. But if I get an email or text message like two or three hours before the event, that would then prompt me to, rem to remember like, hey, oh, we do have an event today. So even though I saw the, all the emails you sent out before and I didn't sign up because I thought I would be busy, the last email is what's going to get me to attend because now I can see that my whole day is actually free. So you really have to make sure that you have targeted marketing to both the people that have signed up and the people that have not signed up for the event. So really cannot overemphasize how important the marketing for the events are. And then kind of similar, you should really focus a lot on this. So as you invite residents, think about like what they see. So if a resident has to email you to sign up for the event, typically they are not going to do it. If they have to call you to RSVP for the event, they are probably not going to do it. So make sure you have a really, a really good system in place to drive RSVPs and then to also drive uh, at overall like attendance. So highly recommend you really think through your event marketing. Then besides just the marketing to your residents, how do you expand the reach of the event? So I've spoken a lot about how to use events 
in partnership with your marketing team. So part of that is really focusing on doing events that are not just for your residents, but doing events that go across the board where you can invite prospects or invite the neighborhood. So we really recommend you do events and then invite prospects to the, those events. It's going to help you in a lot of different ways. It's going to help you boost brand awareness. It's going to help you really boost uh, trust in the community. And it's going to help you establish a lot of local partnerships or uh, relationships with all the different places around the building. So really recommend you use your events as a way to drive foot traffic and as a way to really connect with prospects on a very different level. Um, like as a prospect, if I am deciding between building A and building B, and I get an invite to attend an event at building, B, at building A, most likely that's where I'm going to go. So really think about how can you incorporate uh, prospect marketing into your event mix. And I mentioned earlier that the biggest benefit for doing this is that it's going to allow you to have a much, much bigger budget. So in most situations, your event budget is called a retention budget. But if you were to partner with marketing, you now have a much bigger budget that goes beyond retention. So instead of doing like six events a year, you can now do 12 events a year or 24 events a year. And your marketing team is going to love you for it. And then kind of the same, it's going to help you really boost your brand and awareness in the community. So you want to focus to make sure that you are building like partnerships with various like local bars, restaurants, and anyone else that would want business from your residents. So that's going to allow you to get a lot of, a, a lot more bang for your buck. So definitely recommend uh, you reach out to local businesses to establish those types of partnerships really early in the same vein as you reach out to uh, build your vendor network. Uh, definitely do the same thing too for like local uh, businesses and other things. And then the next thing is like how to make sure that the event runs really well. So on the day of the event, how do you maximize the value from the event? So one thing is uh, get social. So get residents to tag, get residents to uh, take pictures or take pictures yourself. So use this as an opportunity to get residents to engage with your brand online, to engage with your Instagram, to engage with your Facebook. And the quickest way to do that is to offer like rewards or other things when residents do those things. So give residents a reward for taking pictures at the event and sending those pictures to you all. Give residents rewards for attending the event to begin with or provide them rewards for um, bringing friends to the event. So really figure out more creative ways to drive engagement at the event. And then to really take advantage of the fact that you have all of your residents in one place. So maybe ask them to bring someone else to the event or ask them to do X, Y, or Z. So really use the, in the day of the event to drive and get all the things you want residents to do at the event. And the most important one is using the event to generate reviews. So one thing we've found to be really successful is that residents are the most likely to leave reviews after an event than anything else. So use events as a way to generate a lot of reviews. It could be as simple as sending an email after an event to anyone that attended to leave a review about the event, or it could be a much better approach is to bring a QR code and ask people to just scan this QR code and it takes them to um, your Google page, your Facebook, Facebook page, your Yelp page, or wherever to leave a review. Um, we have seen this work really, really well with clients that have 300, 400 plus reviews. And all they did was really focus on events and getting the people at the events to leave reviews. So very simple, if you have an event with 30 people, if just five of those people leave a review, that's five more reviews. If you add that up for the rest of the year, you are able to get almost like 50, 100 or more reviews. And that's what is really going to drive traffic. That's what's really going to drive more people to uh, take a look at your building. So make sure that you are really, really maximizing the value you get from your event. So really force, not force, <laughs> but make it really simple for residents to know that, hey, we just want a review. Just scan here and leave a review. Many of your residents are going to do it because one, if it's a really great event, they are going to be very happy and they are going to want to talk about it. 
And we've seen this like walk, uh, like really work all across the board. Uh, one of our clients, the artwork, they did an outdoor movie just a couple of weeks ago. And from that one, they were able to generate two positive reviews. And one of the residents like actually left pictures from the event on the Google review. So really the goal as you do events is make sure that you are getting at least at minimum two reviews from each event. And that's what's going to make all the difference. That's how you get your next promotion. That's how you get your next uh, whatever. So really make sure that you are doing all the things that are going to help you maximize the ROI from events. And the benefit is then it's much easier to ask for a bigger budget for next year or the next or the year after that. So really make sure that you maximize the value that you get from events. The same thing too, another tip that we have is really focus on uh, local partnerships and really focus on making sure that all your events are listed. I mentioned that one of the big benefits of adding all your events is that it's going to boost attendance. So for one of our clients, Atlas Oakland, uh, they were able to really double their event attendance in less than three months. And part of the reason is they are doing all the event uh, basics. So the marketing where residents can see the events on their resident app, they are getting the emails, they are getting the reminders, and then uh, they can also see all the events that are listed out like indefinitely into the future. So really make sure that you do all those like basics and it's what's going to really drive the biggest ROI. And then, uh, so next thing, we are going to do a raffle for a winner. So uh, Pia, let me know who is the winner. I think she already did it. Uh, but while we wait for that, uh, we have a raffle for uh, a free event. So we will either do this now if Pia is, uh, has already run it. Uh, but that's really the end of the event basics. Um, so we have a lot more content that we'll send out to the attendees on here about um, events, a uh, list of events that we recommend, and other things for you to be aware of. So thank you all for attending. Um, so if you are looking for event ideas, definitely check out Flamingo's Event Marketplace. So we have hundreds of events uh, that you can easily browse. And then we have thousands of event vendors uh, that you can book at any time. So if you ever are like, hey, I don't know what event to do today or tomorrow, uh, create a free account at getflamingo.com and you can easily book any events. So it looks like we have the winner. Um, so Paul Santos is the winner of our free event. So Paul, we will be in touch about uh, your free event. Uh, so thank you everyone for attending. I hope this was helpful and definitely join us on our next few webinars where we break down a few other things, including how to get reviews. Uh, we have helped clients generate uh, thousands of reviews. I think this year we've helped about 100 clients generate about almost like 6,000 reviews each online. So join us for our next webinar on reviews and then uh, next webinar as well on a few other topics related to resident engagement. So keep an eye out for those emails. So thank you guys for attending. I hope you have a good weekend.